for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today we're joined by Newsclicks Probir Purkhas and we're going to talk about the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic globally as well as in India. Probir, thank you so much for joining us. So the number of cases is uh, soon likely to touch around 3 million and we recently crossed the 200,000 deaths uh, uh, landmark also, so to speak. So uh, what exactly is happening with the global spread of the disease? It's been almost three months now. Many of the countries in Europe and to some extent, some states in the US are thinking about withdrawing lockdowns. In India, we've had some of these discussions. So have we reached a time where we can start looking at a very phased or gradual withdrawal of some of the severe restrictions? Well, one thing is, of course, we know much more about the pandemic today, about COVID-19, its progression than we did earlier. But the figures, and this is only about the ones we have found who have been infected, that means the number of people who have not tested, who are asymptomatic and could still have been infected, we don't know those numbers. Rough estimates are probably about, we are catching about maybe anything between 25 to 40 percent of the people and large numbers are still not being detected, particularly in countries like the United States, where one in five cases when you test are found to be infected, which would seem to show that there are much larger numbers for asymptomatic and the population. As you said, it's a three million figure, roughly, that we are already in at. And if you take the number of infected cases, they're less than two million. So a number of these cases have also recovered. The really worrying part, and that's always been the COVID-19 issue, that we have very different death rates depending on where the hospital system has been able to cope with it and where it has not. Germany, the death rates have been relatively much lower. The death rates in Italy, Spain, United States has been relatively much higher. So the issue really is, can the health system actually handle the overload that you're going to get? And it seems that unless you are prepared, unless you're willing to take measures, which are what's called mitigation, Quarantine, of course, is a strict measure, but mitigation also means that you look at who are the people infected, separate them, and so on, and separate the infected, those who are in contact with the infected from the general population, then you will have a better handle on it. If we look at, for instance, infected charts, you will see that countries, and there are about five of them who are pretty high in terms of numbers, that's Italy, which in this particular case led the pack, so to say. Spain, France, Germany, United Kingdom have almost all flattened their numbers. United Kingdom, not so much. The numbers are still rising in terms of deaths. They seem to have a much higher death rate than all the others, even though uh, Germany has been, as I said, much lower than all the other countries. But UK, death rate seems to stand out. Then you have Iran, which has also flattened its curves. All these countries have flattened their curves. They have large numbers of infected, but they still do not look like they are going to go up much further. The, the, we see a doubling rate of maybe something like 15 to 20 days right now. And as, as the time progresses, I think this is going to even out, uh, that the numbers are going to start coming down. The United States is still rising. That means, yes, there is some flattening of the curve from the initial phase where you can see a much sharper rise. But if you look at what's happening now, it's not that it is as flat a curve as we will see in the other four or five countries I talked about. Iran is also a country which has done reasonably well. It's been able to control the numbers, the rise of numbers. It started almost at the same time as Italy did, and it seems to have almost controlled its epidemic. And the numbers are lower than what you would, what you were seeing in the Western European countries. So this brings me to the next point that, you know, if we look at, for instance, what Forbes chart had said somewhere near in February, that the best prepared countries, and they have a list of these best prepared countries, it's US, UK, Netherlands. Okay. Now, all three have been hit and hit pretty hard. And the hospital system in New York particularly has been re hit really hard, as has been United Kingdoms. Also, what's interesting in all these West Euro European countries, that there are a lot of deaths in what is called the care homes, where the old people are. 
when you're there together and if an infection takes place, it's an immune compromised set of people because they're simply old. They have other diseases as well and it seems to spread very fast there and leads to very high deaths. In fact, the figures that we are seeing now seem to indicate that 50% of the figure people who are dead uh, could be, in at least Western Europe and the United States, could be from the care homes. Now, what is the reason for these kind of figures? And there are two explanations, both of which you can decide which to take and which not to take. One is, of course, what is called the climatic issue. That means humidity and heat has a strong correlation in the cold, dry country, infection seems to spread faster. What is called the effective reproduction rate of the disease is around three. If it comes to countries which are relatively more humid and more uh, uh, have a higher temperature, you will see that the number of countries affected are relatively much less. This is one explanation. And that would, of course, map quite closely with the temperate climates being the one which are more uh, prone to the disease as of now. But there is also a separate explanation which comes from looking at how the disease really spreads and not looking at these kind of broad figures, but looking at other ones. I'm not going to say that the uh, agro, the climatic issues are not related. That means, yes, humidity and sunlight do have a role. But looking at what's happening in India, and we'll come to that just a little later, it doesn't seem to indicate that it has such a strong role as it's made out to be. I think what you need to look at when the epidemic spread, the spread to human beings. So what is the connectedness of the people in terms of people-to-people -people contacts, transport, air, travel, bus, car, train, all of this physical connectivity, how closely do people live to each other, the urban areas, how closely packed are they, these also would indicate how the epidemic would spread. And I think the fact that Western Europe went up first, as well as the United States, would seem to also show how connectedness plays an important role in the epidemic. Right. And all the models that we have been talking about, most of them don't take this into account and therefore they're not catching the important element, which is really people spread. It's a disease spreads to people because we are the ones who really reproduce the disease. So Prabir, like we uh, saw, many of these countries are looking at a phased withdrawal of restrictions. And one of the key concerns this has raised is the possibility of another round of infections happening again. So what kind of, uh, how, how do we envision a withdrawal of these restrictions, especially in Western Europe, like you mentioned, which is so strongly where the countries are so strongly connected. There's a lot of internal migration. There's a lot of internal traveling. So what kind of uh, a phased withdrawal are we, uh, is the best possible option? Well, you know, I'm not going to really uh, pronounce as an expert on any of this because I'm not. Looking at what the issues are, we have to move beyond just simple lockdowns. Because even in Wuhan, the lockdowns is not what really brought the disease under control. It was testing, identifying people, separating them, and see to, that the transmission links of the infections are broken. Now, that is the approach which is far more focused on who are infected, where are the hotspots, how do you identify them, and how do you actually take care of them. This is the key. So first stage, yes, a simple lockdown, which is just to break the transmission links, simply because you don't know what's happening. Next phase is really extensive testing, then focusing on the areas that you think are the emerging hotspots. And now that you have antibody testing, the antibody testing should not be used to identify who are sick and who are not. They should be just used at the moment for epidemiolog epidemiological purposes. That means identify areas where you think infections are there. So it's a quick check how many people are infected, how many people are not, and therefore focus on those areas which seem to show a large number of you know, antibodies in the people's blood. So this is the way I would say that the next phase has to move. Yes, the economy, the industry, all of this has to come back. Otherwise, it's the poorest who are going to hit the, get hit the hardest. But it doesn't mean that you remove all restrictions as a lot of the, uh, the what shall we say, what I call misnomer in the global terms of the red states in the United States, which are the most, uh, in, in that sense, the most 
right wing states as they're already calling for that we want our freedom back this is a state intrusion in our lives we don't want it as we know the american people do believe that at the moment physical distancing is still important i think that's going to be there for next 3 to 6 months that there would be much less public events and so on but that is not going to be enough unless you do this so yes i think we are moving into a more flexible regime let's see what the western europeans do what the americans do america it's more state by state is much more being determined by individual governors over there and of course the trumpian misadventures or the shall we say the misadventures in trump land right but for the rest of it i think it is a graded lockdown physical distancing testing we have to see by all accounts our testing numbers have to really go up very very significantly and finally, with regard to India, so we've seen that the number of cases as of today, Monday morning was around close to 28,000. And uh, the number of deaths is around 870, almost close to 900. So like you said, the progress of the disease in India has been comparatively much slower when we look at some of the countries in Western Europe. And at the same time, yesterday saw around 1,300 cases, I believe. So uh, the states again are talking about the possibility of loosening the lockdown a bit the central government has not given a very clear mandate so far on this. So going forward, what are the key steps that need to be taken as far as the governments are concerned? You see, here again, if you take the figures, the gross figures don't tell the full story because India is 1.3 billion people. So one size fits all solution just won't work in a country as complex and as populated as we are. Now, if we look at the figures, and you look at the chart itself and you will see, see that, for instance, if you look at the global infected chart, which I was talking about earlier, Indian figures still show a rise. That means a doubling rate is probably about eight days or so, maybe eight to 10 days at the moment. Okay. Now, that's not a flattening of the curve in the sense, right. say, of Malaysia which you will see the doubling rate is probably something like 25 to 30 days. It's pretty much a flat curve. And it also was at that point of time, at one point of time, it started actually at a higher level because by the time they reached 100, India was relatively behind, meaning that we saw our 100 number, which is the beginning of our charts, uh, relatively about seven, eight days behind Malaysia. But if you now come to India, for instance, again, and look at all the states, you will find that flattening of the curve is visible, of course, in the case of Kerala, which has almost become flat, which means the new cases which are there are very few. Of course, you will have some spikes because even one infected person comes in, there will be some infections that you will see if right. you caught right in the beginning. So some spikes, yes, but they seem to be in control. You will see the Telangana figures are also looking good. If you look at the Telangana chart, if you look at the chart, you will see Telangana curve is also flattening. And also Tamil Nadu seems to be also in some control of what is happening. But if you look at, for instance, the figures of Uttar Pradesh, you look at Madhya Pradesh, you look at even Rajasthan, and of course, Maharashtra, which is very much, you know, still rising. And Gujarat. Oh, these are rising. Pardon? And Gujarat. And Gujarat. I was going to come to Gujarat just a little later. You will see all of them are rising and there has been no significant control that you can see they have exercised. And so that is one issue. If you look at Gujarat as you are talking, you will see its rate of change. That means the rate at which the infections are seen to rise has been faster than most other states. Now that's not surprising because if you go to what the deaths were, and there is a death chart we have, you will see deaths in Gujarat were much earlier, uh, more than most other states. In fact, they are now number two in infections and number two in deaths. But there were also number two in deaths about say eight to 10 days back. And there were number three in deaths maybe about two weeks back. So Gujarat deaths have been much larger that the number of infections, which seem to indicate the testing figures were low. They're not catching the people who are really infected. Maybe they were just going after certain sections and not doing a wide enough testing. 
And normally the deaths takes place, the numbers rise two weeks after you see the infection, which is what you will see in Maharashtra, for instance. The numbers lag by about two weeks. But in the case of Gujarat, actually death figures seem to have been a precursor showing that it was probably uh, not being tested enough, infections are higher. So coming back to India, at the moment, we are not still in control. Some states are, some states are flattening the curve. There are about five, six states, which includes Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, and of course, Maharashtra, and of course, Gujarat. So these are the states which are not in control. Telangana, Tamil Nadu, relatively better. Delhi, looking up a bit, we have to observe quite closely. Maharashtra, some flattening, but still rising. So this is the picture that is there. So I would still think that even if lockdowns are partially lifted, we'll have to do a state-by-state -state approach. And the central government's directives, and they have issued something like 50 over the last 25, 30 days, they seem to be, again, a one-size-fits-all approach. It's almost saying that we have given you the directives. No state can go beyond it because it's done under the Disaster Management Act, and we have the powers. Most of the directives have also come from Ministry of Health, sorry, Ministry of Home. They are not really seem to be coming from a task force which looks at health because this is a public health emergency. It seems to be a police approach that we seem to be largely taking. And that's going to affect the way we react to this uh, particular pandemic. Because, you know, the number of people who are going to die are not that significant given our number. But the point is they have the possibility of overwhelming the health system. And that's what you have to really prepare for, that the numbers, when they come at the same time, doesn't overwhelm the system. At the same time, you now have to also see that people cannot go under this lockdown, particularly in countries like India, where there is a huge number of people who are migrants, who are without any sustenance, who do not have any daily employment. So you will have to consider at least getting some of your industries back slowly. But at the same time, if you want to go that route, then what you need to do is test extensively. And already reports are there. We are running out of what is called the RNA test kits, extraction of the RNA that you have to do. So the test kits may be there, but you're running out of essentially the other reagents, tools, chemicals that you need to run the tests. So just the machines and the kit is not enough. You also need other things along with it. So we have to see what the supply chain is. And finally, let's not forget, our numbers are still very, very low in terms of testing. But the good part of it is, amongst the people we test, about three to 4%, now about 5% seem to show infection. That's still much lower than the United States, for example, where one out of five people who are tested show the infection. Here, about out of 25 people we test, or 20 people we test, we find one infected. Right. So that's a much, much better figures in terms of the ratio. But in terms of the total number of people tests to the population, our figures are one of the lowest in the world. Right. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for talking to us. Yeah,